Hello, Grade 12s. We are discussing the Engineering Graphics and Design PAT. This is the document that was sent to you. And you will have a document which is the template which you have received as well. If we look at our PAT, this is a departmental PAT, so we are going to follow the guidelines exactly as how the department has spelled it out in this document. It's uh, the 2022. So the pad consists of 27 pages, but you are not going to read through all those pages. We are simply going to scroll down only to the section that we need, which is going to be the civil design project part here. Now, of course, there is a mechanical part, which you have the option of doing, but uh, most learners will be doing the civil uh, practical assessment task so this paragraph here you need to read through very intensely and you need to underline certain uh, important factors i will just do a quick summary of it but it's important for you to re-read it and just to make sure that you understand all the detail required so there's a non-governmental organization which now has source funds to be able to assist schools in funding media centers. So your school, which you attended many, many moons ago, was selected as, as one of the recipients of this fund. And they are planning to build a media center. And the media center should have a kitchen and it should have toilet facilities. Now the NGO has also decided to do this in the format of a competition requiring design solution for the building. The design firm that you work for has decided to enter this competition and you have been tasked to come up and submit a suggested design solution. And you will see here that the brief of the competition states that the new building must be a freestanding T or L shape. You will see here L shape or T shape, single story brick structure with a double pitch hip and valley roof with a corrugated iron finish. There is no specific type of name for this structure, so at this very moment we will refer to the structure as just simply a building in process. Now to support this read to lead campaign, the media center section of the building must consist of a small modern library as well as a separate computer room with 10 building computer stations. The entire media center section of the building must have a floor area of at least, at least 180 square meters with only one entrance in the form of a double aluminium and glass swing doors. Then the scenario carries on by saying that adjacent to the media center there should be a kitchen and the total floor area of the kitchen should be at least 70 square meters. And there are lots of specifications that we have to look at here with regard to the kitchen. And those are things that you will have to take out and list and comply with. Then the building must include separate male and female toilet facilities that cater for learners in wheelchairs. So that's very important that you need to look at. And then the building must include undercover walkways that run alongside the outside of the building, linking the toilet facilities, the kitchen serving hatch and the entrance of the media center. That's very important. It runs alongside, as it's stated here, the building in the form of the L shape or T shape. There must be sufficient electrical lighting in all the rooms of the building. And there must be sufficient windows to let in much natural light as possible. All sewage and wastewater from the building must be connected to the existing sewer line or sewage lines on the school property. So you're going to find where those uh, existing lines are. 
and the entire building must not exceed 280 square meters. Please pay attention to the different square meters that we should have for each of the buildings that will be part of the media center, kitchen and toilet facilities. This is basically a summary that I'm giving you, but you will have to go read the paragraph more intensely. This is what the site plan looks like. So there's an existing football field here. There's an existing school building right here, as well as an existing school building right there. This is an open area here. You will find existing parking. You find an existing building right here. So there's an open space here and an open space there which will be the designated areas where possibly this building, the media center and library could be built. Either in this space or in that space over there. There's the existing sewer line that runs to the municipal manor outside in Scholar Street. And you will link the new sewage system to the existing one that runs currently on the property. So what is it that you need to do as the computer part or the computer version of part one of the PET? This document is an editable document in word format. You need to add in your school name, the subject engineering, graphics and design. This is in fact the practical assessment task. You will leave that there as we will have a pictorial picture of your perspective drawing pasted later on as we progress throughout the PET. You will have your name and surname, you will have your grade 12 class, which you have at your specific school, and the year is 2022. That is your cover page. Please make sure that you change the font. You can utilize the information here, but you can manipulate the font, the size, the structure of this front page, and every other page that you will find in this document. This is the declaration of an authenticity, which you will fill in later, but you can type in your school name, your name, initials and surname, and later on, once you have printed, you will sign this document and state the date. I will then sign in turn upon the receival of this document as well. The index page has been designed already. This is the format of the pet. This is how you're going to follow through by doing each one of these headings um, throughout the, the course of the pet. Please take note that it has been created for you already, but you can't leave it in this state. You have to manipulate it and change the font and the structure of this index page. Then we move on to our design brief, where you have to write two paragraphs. I've highlighted this in red, because you need to delete those sections when you are going to type your paragraphs. Your first paragraph will link to the document in your PET. So if you look at your PET, we will find the phase one presentation requirements. Here are the two paragraphs which you're going to write as number one, where you need to analyze the given scenario and formulate a design brief in two paragraphs. The first paragraph must, in your own words, give a brief background of the project as well as a detailed description of what has to be designed. So you're going to tell me a little bit about the project, what we have read, or what you have read, giving some detail as to what the mainframe of your project would be. If we scroll down, you will find that the second paragraph must, in your own words, give a clear overview of your role in the project, as well as the description of the complete design process that you are going to implement to complete the PET project. So this will include who you are, which company you work for, where they're situated, what is your role, how you are going to work your way through the PET, and obviously using a process of where you're going to meet with the clients, you are going to do research, you're going to present some um, sketches to the client, you are going to have it signed off, you are going to visit the site. Those type of things that will lead up to you doing your final designs and of course 
presenting it to the municipality for approval. And then lastly, you will also put out tenders for those who are in the building industry to be able to undertake such a building project. All of that information you are going to put in these two paragraphs over here. Then, 1.3, you're going to have a list of a minimum of 20 given specifications and 1.4, 5 constraints. Now, I can already tell you that the specifications will all come from this document here and you can actually break up the specifications by looking at the different um, designated buildings so you will have your media center and you will have all the specifications that refer to the media center and how the media center should be set up then you will look at your library and the specifications of the library which you will have as well you will have a look at your kitchen which you will have um, set up adjacent to or connected to the, the media center and you will obviously look at the males and female bathroom facilities available as well. You can also refer to some of the external components which you would find in this paragraph over here. Just keep in mind that constraints are those musts which you can't deviate from. So it refers basically to what is called here in this paragraph, it has to be a T-shape or an L-shape, it must be a single story. All those that refer to meter squares, those are all musts. Everywhere you see meter squares are all musts. So those are all constraints which you need to put down under constraints and you only need to have five of those. If you have more, that is quite fine, but five is the minimum required. Learners, once you have completed your design specifications and your five constraints, you need to look at your management plan. The management plan in this document has been drawn up for you. All you need to do is to fill in the respective dates. So you might have on one specific date you did the design brief. On another date you will have the research and you will follow that right down to this last part which is your perspective drawings. We, of course, move on to the next topic, which is going to be your research. And here you will conduct the research on three components, of which the one is designs and floor plan layouts of small modern libraries and media centers. Remember to copy this, each one, separately and enter it into your search bar, your Google search bar, and the information will pop up there, which you will copy into this document over here and I've allocated one research component per page that being 2.1 this being 2.2 three examples of hip and valley roofs and three examples of covered walkways all on this page please allow for more than one picture this is three examples and three examples take note of that and finally you will have 2.3 designs and construction slash drawing details of roll-up doors for serving hatches. Once you have completed that, please take note, very importantly, that you need to have a list of all the references. You can either have your references listed here in bulleted format, or alternatively, you can actually just list your reference directly on the research page where you have sourced the information. So, for example, if you have done that research here, you can actually just put the link down here at the bottom very, in very small print. Alternatively, you can have it right here at the bottom and you can place it in bulleted format. Both would suffice. Right, learners, that basically is part one of your pet. Just keep in mind that you may just copy all these over from this document in bulleted points over into your specifications. You don't need to retype anything. You can just copy each one of these specifications and make up your 25 
um, constraints and specifications um, by copying everything over into the Word document. Alright, that concludes your computerized version. There is, however, this part that you will see here, which will be done after you have completed your designs. So we will leave this part open until you have completed your designs. Because the selection process and evaluation comes after you have completed both your designs.